Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again, well, with another scientific testing type of video, maybe, I'm not sure. Well, at least another one where we try to figure out methods of uh, bringing catalytic converters back to life. Behind me, my 1993 Acura Vigor. Now, I don't believe it has a bad catalytic converter. In fact, it being a 93, it's not OBD2 and doesn't have any catalytic converter monitoring of any sort. However, I'm about to do some exhaust work on it, and some of that exhaust work involves the catalytic converter itself. So, uh, given that my last video, which I'll post a link to in the description, uh, wasn't successful using lacquer thinner, just running it through, the other method that I've heard about, uh, and I will come out and say that I probably didn't use enough lacquer thinner, I'll say that now, uh, but I'd like to try another method of cleaning catalytic converters, and that is with basically dish soap and water. Now, I, I am showing the product label on this one because uh, Dawn is the detergent that they use when they've got oil spills and they're trying to clean up animals and things. Uh, apparently it's very good with petrochemicals, which is the reason why I'm, I'm going to use it today. I didn't buy a massive bottle of it, but I'm going to try a little bit of soap and water on this catalytic converter. I'm going to test it before and after. Now, I will also say this. I am repairing the exhaust on this vehicle because of an exhaust leak that's before the catalytic converter. That exhaust leak is obviously going to skew our results a bit. So I will also put that out there, but I just want to see if just soap and water has an effect. I've had some people on my forum say that they've had success cleaning catalytic converters uh, doing this using this method. Now, I will say that if your catalytic converter is broken apart on the inside, say the substrate, the ceramic is br all broken up, this isn't going to mean anything to you. This is only if, okay, you're getting a PO420 code and you want to try something before you spend a whole lot of money on a new catalytic converter. This might save you. Uh, in fact, I don't even know what these results are going to be, but I'm going to check the catalytic converter both before and after the cleaning and we'll see what results we get. So. We'll, we'll do it as scientifically as possible. Anyway, let's get this car jacked up. Let's get that catalytic converter off of here and see what we're dealing with. Okay, here's our catalytic converter. Uh, for this test, I'm going to uh, do the temperature both at the inlet and the outlet uh, to show you uh, what those temperatures are. But there is an exhaust leak, as I said, uh, before we actually do our, our exhaust repair. So be aware of that. And unfortunately that exhaust leak is right up in here just before the catalytic converter. Okay, Brian, start it up. Okay, well, uh, that was unexpected. Uh, there was a significantly higher temperature at the front than there was the back. I think the front was like 220 and the rear was like 169, 170. Uh, according to what I said in the diagnosing a catalytic converter video, uh, the catalytic converter should be about 100 degrees hotter at the outlet than it is at the inlet if it's working properly now. Uh, the fact that it's getting other air introduced into it uh, in front because of that exhaust leak, that could come into play. However, uh, this is a good experiment to see if uh, using detergent can clean this up and, and can bring uh, an ailing converter back to life. So I've got my fingers crossed that that's the case, and if it is, well, we win. If not, well, I'm going to be doing a whole lot of exhaust work for nothing because I actually need a catalytic converter too. <laughs> that would be unfortunate. Uh, but let's Let's see if this method works first. We have the catalytic converter off of the vehicle and you can see through it. The substrate is not broken. So let's uh, give our dish detergent a try to see if it uh, can clean up the insides of this thing. Okay, well, I have found this trash can, which is just the right size to fit this catalytic converter down into so I can completely submerge it uh, while I do my cleaning. And I'm just gonna fill it up with water while I add the detergent and I'm going to add a liberal amount just going to let that uh, hopefully fill up I can't see how this can hurt it's just water and soap it's not like I'm using harsh chemicals or anything I'm just using water and soap all right, it's done. You're soaking in it. We'll just, 
leave that to bubble away while we go do other things. And we'll come back in a little bit and hopefully it'll be nice and clean. All right, we had a, probably a good half hour at least of this thing soaking in this solution of dish detergent and water. Um, it was completely submerged. <laughs> no, I'm not taking a leak on camera. Um, it's still, it's still draining out. Uh, it's it's kind of hard for you to see. You can only catch a glimpse now and again on the inside there of the light that's passing through. There's still it's still filled up with some of the bubbles. The only thing we could do now is I'm gonna put it together with the rest of the exhaust system, run it on the car, recheck the temperature to see what we got. If it had an effect, it had an effect. As I said, there are people who have had success with this method, but it does require getting the catalytic converter off the vehicle, which can be challenging. Right, well, I've done my exhaust repair, as you can see. Uh, that's in another video. Uh, I'll have links in the description, but now we will check the uh, temperature front and back of the catalytic converter and see where we're at. Okay, Brian, bring it up. Right, well, that was not successful. Now, in the time that I shot that first part of this video and now, I've actually had a chance to talk directly with Scotty Kilmer uh, at an event we both attended. And I, I just asked him some specifics on some of these things that he's had some success with as far as cleaning catalytic converters. Uh, and this is what he had to say. As far as the lacquer thinner, I didn't use enough uh, before. I, I believe I stated that earlier in this video. But I think that uh, the ratio that he pointed out was like a gallon of lacquer thinner to like 10 gallons of gas. So like a uh, one to 10 ratio. And then a good nice long drive to run that through uh, to see if that would work. I'm not gonna try that in this instance. Uh, I'm gonna go back and try the soap and water method because I also asked him about that. And I said, well, as far as the soap and water method, what was, what was the thing that, that made that successful? And he said, soaking it overnight. Uh, which I did not do. I've actually removed the catalytic converter again here, and I'm gonna do precisely that. I'm going to uh, soak it overnight. And one more thing that, that Scotty had to say about these catalytic converters is that if they're all gummed up on the inside or if the substrate is, is broken, there's no point in even trying because it's never gonna happen. This works in situations where there's a coating on the outside of, those, of the uh, substrate that is preventing the uh, gases, the exhaust gases, from coming into contact with the actual substrate and, and, not, and giving it that catalyst effect. Uh, so the, primarily that's what you're doing here. You're, you're basically cleaning off uh, any of the deposits that are over the top of, of the metals that are inside here, uh, platinum and palladium, that uh, cause it to work. Now, I went off and did some research on my own looking to see what it would take to clean platinum and clean palladium. And I actually entertained the thought uh, for a moment of using the sodium hydroxide that I used to clean condensers with uh, in previous videos. I shied away from that, namely because of, uh, from what I was seeing, it wasn't clear, but it looked like there might be a reaction between the sodium hydroxide and the, the platinum and the palladium inside of this, uh, particularly when it heated up, because there may still be a little bit inside here when you're done and you run exhaust gas through it, the thing heats up, and there could be some chemical reactions there that weren't so good. But what I did find was on jewelry sites about cleaning platinum and cleaning palladium jewelry. And really what they mentioned was pretty much dish, dish soap and water with one addition, a little bit of ammonia uh, in addition to the dish soap seemed to be something that they had uh, listed as something that could be successful. So I'm gonna try that now. I'm gonna soak this overnight in my soap and water solution, but I'm also gonna add a little bit of ammonia to the mix uh, to see if that can also help uh, clean things up. But we'll see if, we'll see if any of that's successful, but that's, that's the information that I found. And as I said, you may not always be successful with this. This catalytic converter comes from 1993. <laughs> so that, that may have something to do with it. It may just be done 
but if we can bring it back and save ourselves some money, particularly since I modified this catalytic converter in such a way to where this is the catalytic converter that's going on this car no matter what, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sort of obliged to try to make it work. So let's uh, go back over to the sink, get this thing together, and uh, see if we can get this cleaned up. One last thing, uh, a really high concentration of dish soap is recommended. And just like before, I'm gonna be using Dawn. Here we are once again with my bucket and my sink. I'm gonna start the water. And since I used half a bottle of dish soap last time, I'm gonna do it again. The cost of a bottle of this dish soap is nothing compared to a new catalytic converter. <laughs> and I have a little bit of ammonia here that I'm gonna use as well. Just gonna finish that off also. Well, there it is. Um, it's completely submerged. I'm gonna let it sit here overnight. I'm gonna come back tomorrow, install it on the vehicle, and we'll do another temperature test and see if it's uh, actually worked this time. And we're back. It's uh, been sitting for about 24 hours, actually. It doesn't look like you can see down in there all that well, but it looks a bit cleaner. It smells nice. All right, well, I guess it's time for the moment of truth. I've got it going about 2,500 RPM. Uh, now let's check the temperatures. It's like we got about 500, about 500 degrees in the front. About 250 in the back. According to uh, how this is supposed to work, it, uh, well, it looks like it's going up though. Maybe I should give it a little bit more time. Well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it's still much hotter at the front than it is at the back. So I can't exactly call this a success, unfortunately. I'm kind of disappointed in that, if I'm honest, because I was really hoping that would work. Yeah, this is just too funny. Don't worry about that one back there. That's the weep hole for the muffler. <laughs> My exhaust is literally blowing bubbles. That is just hilarious. It smells nice too. I mean, they're shooting out all the way out here. <laughs> well, it certainly hasn't been a result of a lack of trying. The ammonia, uh, the addition of that, like I said, I found that with uh, some jewelry cleaning tips that I found online for cleaning platinum jewelry. Didn't seem to help. Once again, I, I don't think this is necessarily the technique that's not working because I believe this technique will work. However, catalytic converters get old sometimes and they can't be brought back. Uh, even Scotty said something like that. There are certain ones that just won't come back. So I, I invite you to try this and share your results, but I'm really disappointed that so far up to this point, I haven't given you a viable solution, at least on camera, for cleaning a catalytic converter. As I said, if you want to use that lacquer thinner method, um, use about one gallon to 10 gallons of fuel. I, I know there may be some concerns about that harming your fuel system or your engine. If that's the case, try this method. This isn't gonna hurt anything. It'll blow some bubbles out your tailpipe, but uh, yeah, this catalytic converter seems to resist cleaning. It seems to wanna to stay dirty. <laughs> I'm fortunate in that uh, my state does not require emissions testing, so I'll be able to drive this car for a while uh, until something else comes along. Although at this point, it's practically vintage, so I may be exempt. Anyway, uh, hey, if you have automotive questions outside of what was addressed in this video, I would ask that you go to EricTheCarGuy.com. There's a welcome video there to tell you about all the amazing features we have uh, to help you with automotive issues, should you have them. Oh, and uh, here on Eric the Car Guy, we post repair videos every Friday, so come back and see us then if you're into those. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.